LV55 Media LLC presents Private Investigations Read Aloud, a chronological scene-by-scene read-through of the Private Investigations Book 1 and Book 2 novel for the viewing community. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Some of the neighborhood sparrows are singing while others seem content, hopping about searching for seeds and discarded human crumbs. Several who are flying and hopping about are forced to scatter when a Canyon Copper Hyundai Santa Fe Sport pulls into the empty stall directly in front of the orange brick Victoria style building. After a few moments, Sam exits, shuts his driver's door, and walks around to the rear of the vehicle. Still holding his car keys, Sam lifts the tailgate, quickly looks at his watch. Dang, 6.42 he thinks. After grabbing a couple of plastic sacks, he closes it and presses the remote to lock his vehicle. As he gets closer and begins walking up the stairs to the porch, several birds milling about, perhaps searching for worms and bugs, quickly fly away. Sam smirks thinking, it's good Max isn't out here right now, he be having a field day. That's all I need is Donna coming into my office complaining about another dead bird she found underneath her desk. Sam, still smiling, unlocks the door and enters, then closes the door behind him and locks it. As Sam walks down the hallway past the three offices, the familiar sound of a small bell is heard as Max trots trots out into the hallway from the storage room, surveys the activity, then meows a few times. Hey, Max! How you doing, buddy? Max meows a few more times. Yes, I know you're hungry. Let's get you fixed up here. As Sam walks into the storage room, Max follows close behind, occasionally meowing, then begins rubbing his body up against Sam's lower legs. Sam places both bags on the empty shelf, grasps a plastic spoon from a nearby open Ziploc bag, takes out a can of cat food from one of the bags, peels back the lid and scrapes its contents into one side of Max's cat food dish. He then grabs the, the near empty bag of dry cat food sitting on the shelf, pours enough to finish filling up the dish, then mixes the contents thoroughly. Sam looks down at his friend, who's looking up, licking his tongue in and around his mouth with anticipation. Sam smirks. I'm almost done, buddy. He grabs a small plastic bottle of water, opens it, pours its contents into the other half of Max's bowl. Here you go, he says while carefully placing the cat food dish on top of the mat in the corner of the room, then watching Max dive right in. Sam briefly caresses Max's back, then grasps a rolled up sport camp pad from the room's opposite corner and a pillow off a nearby shelf. He glances towards Max once more, who is still chowing down before exiting the room. Sam walks into the conference room next door to his office, turns the light on, leans a pillow against the wall underneath the window and unrolls the camp pad. He places the pillow on one end, then removes his shoes before pulling his phone from his jacket pocket and dialing a number. I'm in the next I'm in the office next to mine napping. Wake me at nine. I took care of Marjorie's issue this morning. Sam ends the call, removes his jacket, then places it on one of the chairs that surround the small round table within the office. He turns off the light, closes the door approximately three quarters of the way, then lies down on the camp pad, placing his phone between the wall and the pillow. After Sam Mm. yawns and shuts his eyes, he hears that familiar bell sound getting closer, then stopping. I'm in here, Max, he says. There's brief silence, then Sam hears the bell sound enter the room. As it gets closer, he can hear Max purring loudly right before he fills his nose and whiskers, rubbing up against his face. Max briefly steps on and around Sam's legs while sniffing, then lies down next to Sam. To learn more about Sam Aquino and the many other characters involved in these mysterious, intriguing, suspenseful, and coincidental fiction stories, purchase a copy of Private Investigations, Book 1 and Book 2, in one volume by visiting Doran's Publishing, available both in softcover and ebook formats also available at Amazon Books and Barnes & Noble.